Healthy boundaries, the bullshit phrase spreading all across America. Now we're starting to hear this phrase everywhere, especially in the realm of relationship advice, whether it's on TikTok, Instagram, doesn't matter. We're being surrounded by this idea of creating healthy boundaries between ourselves and others in order to function in the world. But what if I told you this term has been hijacked from people on both the right and the left, simply because they're sensitive and because they don't have any real ability to defend the ideas that they believe. Today, we're gonna dig around this topic, figuring out what actual healthy boundaries are, all while I teach you how to make the best goddamn steak you've ever had. So without further ado, welcome to the Anti-Profit Kitchen. So before we start talking about the destruction of America and how healthy boundaries can save it from the brink of collapse, let me tell you a little bit about what we're cooking today. We're gonna to be dealing with these beautiful grass-fed ribeye steaks. Every single part of this process is absolutely essential, so be sure to be taking notes. First thing we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking the steak out of the bag. As much as I like eating melted plastic, I'm not going to subject you to this same indignity. Now, once your steaks are out, you wanna make sure that you pat them down because too much water on the outside is going to kind of fuck up your crust. Dab them down nicely. And then we are going to take our salt and salt these bad boys and let them sit with the salt for a minimum of 15 minutes a maximum of 14 minutes. All right, so while we're letting these bad boys sit with the salt, what exactly are healthy boundaries? The way that I like to think about boundaries is basically this invisible line that separates me from you. It's my ability to define what it is that I care about as separate from what it is that you care about. I remember when I was in the middle of my relationship with my ex-wife, I viewed her problems with alcohol as something that I needed to fix. I needed to be the one who reminded her to moderate her drinking. I needed to be the one to make sure that she did not drive drunk because if I didn't do those things, that would make me a bad boyfriend. But as time went on, I began to to realize that things like drinking, things around addiction in general, these are not things that you can fix for other people. They have to fix them for themselves. And indeed, the more entrenched that you get inside of those problems, the more and more difficult you make your life because you put yourself in a place where you're no longer the only person who expects you to fix the other person's problem. They begin to expect it as well. And to make matters worse, they begin to resent you for it. And on that happy note, let's take our next step into creating the most delicious steak of all fucking time. So what we are going to be doing here is we are going to be dressing the boar. Now most people, when they cook a steak, they tend to cook all of the ingredients together either on the grill or on a cast iron skillet, meaning they put the butter, the garlic, the rosemary, all of it together to cook with the steak. However, this robs us of the opportunity of experiencing fresh ingredients because when we cook these things, it completely changes the flavor profile of stuff like rosemary and butter. So in order to avoid this and to have a fresher tasting experience, we're going to put all of these things on these two boards right here to be used later on in the process. Good Lord, it's hard to see in this mask. All right, so we're going to be putting down the butter. Now you might be horrified with the amount of butter that I put down. You might be thinking to yourself, that man is going to have a heart attack and you would be correct. I simply don't care. Step number two, we are going to be taking the rosemary and pulling this off of the stem and just making a bit of a bed of greens for our steak. And I know this doesn't make a lot of sense right now, but I promise this is all going to come together in the end. Now, step number three, we're going to be taking care of the garlic. My favorite tool to be using when it comes to garlic is a micro grater. I'm gonna create a little bed of garlic, like I said earlier with the butter. You might be horrified with the amount of garlic that I'm gonna be putting on my steak, but my religiously held belief is this, there's no such thing as too much garlic. Oh my God, it's impossible to cook in this fucking mask. And then the last step here, super duper easy. We're gonna take some black pepper and we're gonna throw some right on top. Not too much, not too little. We want a fairly generous portion, but nothing that goes super overboard. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take these suckers to the grill. All right, so let's see if I can successfully navigate myself to the grill without running into anything. Thank you to my trusty assistant, Kevin, who is the man. You should hire him for videography services if you are looking to get into the social media game. So we're gonna throw these guys right on top of the heat. Ooh, listen to that sizzle. Delicious, very nutritious. All right, so here's the thing about steak or any meat. Use a meat thermometer because the temperature that we're looking for here is 120, 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, we're gonna be throwing on some asparagus on the side as well. So at this point, we've discussed the definition of a healthy boundary as well as the need for healthy boundaries in our day-to-day -day life. But now let's talk a little bit about what a healthy boundary looks like practically in our everyday experience. So an example of a healthy boundary would be the ability for you to say no or yes to someone that you care about and to be okay when other people say no to you. However, an example of an unhealthy boundary would be an inability on your part to say no to other people because you fear the rejection or the abandonment 
that might come as a result. Another example of a healthy boundary would be you expecting reciprocity in a relationship where you share responsibility and power between yourself and the other person that you're dealing with. Whereas an example of an unhealthy boundary would be where you tend to either be overly responsible and controlling or on the flip side, being completely passive and dependent. Oh sh I forgot about the fucking steak. Let's check the internal temperature of these steaks. Pretty well, the internal temperature here is 123 degrees Fahrenheit, which means it's about time to take these bad boys off. Now for me, I like the asparagus really burned to hell. So I'm gonna put this directly over the flames though. You can ultimately do this in whatever way you feel comfortable. And from here, we're gonna take these steaks inside. As you can see, these hot, hot steaks are melting down that buttery goodness, releasing some of the juices here onto the plate. This is going to be absolutely key for the last step that we're going to be taking care of in just a second. But before we take care of that last step, we're gonna add one last tasty, tasty treat to the top of that. And that is going to be the addition of lemon juice. Let's get rid of these lemon seeds as well. And we're gonna be letting those sit for the next five minutes. Now, while we wait, let's finish up this conversation about these pesky boundaries and how I think this relates to America. Because right now we're in a point in time where both people on the left and the right are screaming at each other, demanding the other side comes over to their point of view and adopts their point of view as truth. Because everywhere you go on TikTok, someone is trying to shove some sort of agenda down your throat. And furthermore, they're telling you that if you do not agree with every element of their argument, you're somehow a bigot, you're unpatriotic, you're an idiot, or you're just an entirely terrible person altogether. This is not the way that it's supposed to be. And I'm a firm believer that bringing only logic and reason to these arguments will not bring forth the change that we need to have happen. However, on the other side of the aisle, if you only bring emotion into these arguments and scream at people and tell them that they're pieces of shit in the event that they don't believe in what it is that you believe, that's not going to solve our problems either. So when it comes to America, I believe the number one thing that we can do as individuals is to create healthy boundaries between ourselves and others and to invite other people to do the same for themselves. Because only through this healthy separation of your problems from my problems, are we going to be able to participate in civil dialogue in such a way that brings forth real solutions rather than more and more division. So if you care about your country, or even more simplistically, you simply care about the people around you in your life, do yourself a favor and do them a favor. Figure out what your values are and create healthy boundaries for yourself and your life. All right, so at this point, it is time to slice these suckers up and serve them for a romantic meal between myself and my videographer, Kevin. All right, so in order to plate these successfully, we wanna make sure that we slice these up. And again, we're gonna be serving this with some asparagus. We're just gonna throw some olive oil on there, throw some cayenne pepper, and lastly, some good old lemon juice. All right, so moment of truth. Kevin, take a bite. What do you think? Mmm, I'm speechless now. Is it good? Is it good, speechless? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good speech. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, I was gonna say, the whole point of the video has been ruined if you don't actually like the steak. <laughs>